Hello there, I'm here at Alexis at the Gardens Mall with the delectable Lisa S, model, actress, Channel V host, and current host of VIP Access on Star Movies. Uh, she's in town to host the exclusive screening of James Cameron's eagerly awaited sci-fi epic Avatar. Hello there, Lisa. Hi. Nice to have you with us, mate. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. All right, we're going to start this interview. Maybe we can start with you telling me a bit about your background. You were born in Monaco and uh, raised in New York. That's a wonderfully exotic mix, mate. It is kind of. Um, yeah, I was born in Monaco and I lived there for the first couple years of my life. And then my mom had the bright idea, and it's probably the smartest idea. Mm. Monaco is not the best place to raise your children. Right. I think you grow up with a very warped sense of what reality is. Mm -hmm. So she brought me to New York. Talk about a smack in the face with reality. <laughs> And that was amazing. That was actually my favorite time uh, of my growing up period. And then from there on, on, I went to high school in New Jersey. Yes, the armpit of America. And That's where the Sopranos come that, from. Right? Actually, yes. We actually have given birth to many, many a mafiosa. Wonderful which stuff. we're very proud of, very proud of. And of course, the casinos in Atlantic City. Um, and then after that, after high school, I was kind of discovered as a model, very young age, mm. at 14. Actually, I actually just turned 14, so 13 and a half. Mm. And as soon as I graduated high school, the day after I graduated high school, I left and started traveling. Wow. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you, Lisa, like, what was it like being like a model, you know, going to London, Milan, Paris, and all that, at the age of 14? I mean, that's really young, you know? It was amazing. I had the time of my life. I didn't work much. I mean, it was more, you know, when you're that age and you're exposed to things that in America you would never be exposed to at that age, you indulge. Um, a lot of late nights, a lot of dancing on tables, but I had a great time. And it was also a very free time, you know, because you're so young, you, you actually are, you're not really responsible for yourself yet. So you're living off of somebody else's dime. Right. It was great. It was like a giant vacation. Right. So yeah. like a dream come true. It for really a young was. Girl, right? It really was. Okay. Well, and then, I mean, you, you know, fast forward to now and you've made like a smooth transition from the catwalk to like uh, the television screen now. Uh, how are you enjoying being on TV all the time now? I something actually, you enjoy? Yeah, you like it? yeah, surprisingly. It's funny because people always always ask me about how do I feel about being on stage as a model. And mm -hmm. to be very honest, I have I, I have a real fear of a lot of people looking at me. Mm -hmm. I don't like going into crowded places because I'm really tall, so inevitably everybody stares at me just for my height alone. Like, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, Sorry, i got to cut in. How tall are you? I'm 179. 179. So I'm 5'11". Bloody hell. Yes, but then when I wear heels, I'm actually six foot two almost. So I'm like about 181, 183, around that. Okay, so that's extremely tall, especially, especially by Asian in Asia. <laughs> so that, you know, I've. In that aspect, modeling was really hard for me because I, I kind of do have a, a form of stage fright, so to speak. What's great about TV is I can still reach the same amount of people, if not more, but I have you know, the comfort of only being with one or two other people. Mm -hmm. So you kind of take away that fear factor a yeah. little bit. So I love being on TV. And the great thing is, is you can NG, you can mess up, and all you do is cut it and edit it. Okay, <laughs> okay, fantastic stuff. Well, you know, obviously we see you a lot on TV here in Malaysia, uh, on Channel V and that, right? And uh, I just got to ask you, how big of a music buff are you anyway? You love your music? I love my music. Yeah. And I've loved music since a very young age. Um, and I started off really loving classic rock, which is kind of a typical kind of the typical road that you go in America when you st in high school. Everybody listens to classic rock. Right. I don't know if I would call myself so much a buff. Because a buff to me is really somebody who knows every little tiny detail about all the little nuances and, and even has maybe a lot of knowledge about music itself, the actual okay. structure of music. Mm -hmm. But I am a music lover. And as I get older, I love the whole gamut of music. And I used to say I love everything except for country. Honestly, I even love country now. I mean, there are some country artists that are just hey, there's some phenomenal. Dope stuff. There's yes. some dope country music. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Garth Brooks, he's awesome. He is awesome. Taylor Swift has done an amazing thing for country music. Mm -hmm. So for me now, I just love any kind of music and I'm open to listen to whatever. Okay, okay. And also, of course, we see we're seeing you now on uh, uh, VIP Access on Star yeah. Movies. Uh, does this mean you get to travel to all these beautiful junkets and talk to the likes of Tom Cruise? Yeah, and Tom and Cruise is all, George Clooney. Oh my gosh, yeah. if I ever get a chance to, to interview Tom Cruise, I mean George Clooney. I did interview Tom Cruise. <laughs> George Clooney, I would melt into a puddle under the chair. Right. But, and I thought that's what would happen to me when I interviewed mm -hmm. Tom Cruise. But surprisingly, 
he's a very charismatic person, mm -hmm. but he makes you feel like he's a normal guy. You right. know, when you talk to people like that, you've interviewed many people, I'm sure, and mm -hmm. and he's one of those people that made me feel at ease. Mm -hmm. That was my first ever interview for VIP Access. And he's dead small as well. You must yes. have towered over him. Well, little do people know is in between. <laughs> you know, as as you know, in between yourself and the celebrity on the red carpet, there's usually a, a barrier. Right. And thank goodness this barrier was solid. Mm -hmm. So what he didn't know is that my legs were actually spread out like this. So I was out like this and I was leaning over a little bit and then I just got to his height. <laughs> so he never actually found out how tall I really was. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's quite a hilarious. But I, I've gotten to go to Thailand and Korea and I've done a junket in Hong Kong, which is nice because it was near my house. Mm -hmm. um, I hope to get some more junkets, maybe the ones in Australia. Mm -hmm. It's Junkets are fun. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, they're, they're very fun. And, you know, I mean, it's a lot of work, but uh, you, you, you get you, you get to meet other journalists. Yeah, that, stuff, that's right? what I found yeah. interesting. Mm. Forget about the celebrities. I started interviewing the journalists. Mm. Like, I was asking a million questions about their job, and they're like, whoa, are you interviewing me? I'm like, sorry, it's my job. I can't help it. <laughs> but I thought that was really interesting as well. Mm. But what, what about you as a, a movie buff then? I mean, obviously, to do this job, you've got to get a handle on like movies. Or what kind of stuff do you like? I mean, um, any, any particular director or film springs to mind? Well, I, my absolute favorite film of all time is Usual Suspects. We kids stuff. You know, I like that woof -woo factor at the end of a movie. You know, where you go, whoa, what? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's the feeling I got from that movie. Um, I'm pretty open about movies. Of course, I, I love some movies more than others, some genres more than others. I, I'm a chick. I love romantic comedies I can't help it um, I really love murder mysteries you know where you don't know who did it uh, who done it you don't know who did it till the very end of the movie um, I love period pieces um, yeah I love all those types of movies I'm pretty open I can watch anything you know and, and it helps when you have a partner that's a movie fanatic yeah. so we watch everything and he's really my partner as well is really into um, kind of art healthy films so I feel like I've gotten a really great education about movies with him. Fantastic. And obviously, you know, I mean, apart from doing the Channel V, uh, VIP Access, you've also done acting. So, yeah. I mean, you've been on a film set. Yeah. The other side of the camera. Yeah. I mean, let me ask you about the acting. Is it something that you, you enjoyed and would you, can you see yourself taking it more seriously in the future? Now? Never. I'm not an actress. No. no. I love it. It's so much fun. But I'm realistic. I, it's not a talent. It's not. I'm not a natural-born talented actress. I'm. Mm. I'm good at. You know, in Cantonese, it's directly translated as the flower vase girl. I'm not sure. You know, here what it's called, but basically meaning the pretty girl in the corner who has like three lines. And that's basically what I've done. And I've and done four movies. Now, right? but yeah. Like, given time, could you not see yourself like maybe? I would love to yeah. get a leading part in a movie. I would love to, but it's not something I would pursue. I would definitely not be the type to do 4,000 auditions to get one part. For me, you know, that you have to have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a passion for acting. I love it. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful break from the modeling world that I've been doing. But yeah. at the end of the day, there are so many more beautifully talented people that should be actresses. If I got a part and I took it away from somebody who was actually talented, well, I don't know how I'd feel about that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's very good for me. Well, you, you mentioned your partner just now, and obviously we all know it's Daniel Wu. Yeah. Uh, i got to ask you, right? I mean, you live in Hong Kong, high-profile sort of relationship. I mean, how, how difficult is, is it for you guys? You know, I mean, everybody, you're, you're two well-known people. In Hong Kong, yeah. it's pretty impossible. Right. Um, in Hong Kong, I stay home a lot. I work and then I stay home and I eat at home and I, you know, like we don't go to the movies on a Saturday night for obvious reasons and yeah. we stay away from really crowded areas. But it's only really in Hong Kong and when I'm not with him, if, if I go out on my own, it's a lot easier mm -hmm. because people obviously recognize me, but there's not that fanaticism about me because I'm not an idol. You know, he's an idol. I'm a personality, which are two very different things. So I do get lovely people who come up to me and ask me for autographs and whatnot, but but I don't get that fanaticism. Um, you know, Hong Kong is a very small place. Mm. It's a tiny little place with seven million people condensed in a tiny little tiny place. Had I been in any other country, I know the reality is I probably wouldn't be as well known or popular because there's so many other people around. Mm -hmm. But it's lovely when we leave. Like when I come to Malaysia, I see people looking at me, mm. but no one. No one accosts me, so to speak. You know, yeah. I don't get any rrr, grabbing like this. Singapore is the same. Mm. China, they're starting to recognize me a bit, which is a little scary because you got a billion people there. So yeah, now all of a yeah. sudden, I'm like, ooh, a billion people grabbing you. <laughs> yeah. It's not pleasant at all. Right? Which, which Daniel has to deal with, you know, when yeah. he's in China, but not for me. Mm. 
We've been lucky, though. I have to say, the Hong Kong media have been very nice to us. Mm-hmm. Um, they very rarely write negative things about us, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's because we're both um, quite open people and we're nice to them and we're not mean. I think so it's you, really you're important. Not, you're not into like punching a paparazzi. A, a la Sean again. Penn? No, yeah. you'll you'll never catch a photo of me going like this. No, <laughs> or like they all <laughs> the, yeah. grab the camera. Like the no, you know what it is? Is at the end of the day, they're doing a job, and they have to feed their families, and they have to get their paycheck, and they have a boss who's asking them for a picture. So I can't, you know, even though sometimes I, I do think about what makes you want to be in that line of work at the end of the day once you are in that line of work you need to do your job right. and that's the way I look at it I mean I don't vilify them by any means granted we don't have the same problems that American artists have mm-hmm. with the American paparazzi sure. so it's it's a little more respectful so they, didn't, they don't cross the line with you guys they have you crossed the line once and then they, they go usually with one time the line was crossed by one particularly offensive reporter um, who camped outside of our house on a mountainside and then proceeded to take pictures of us in our home um, and it was a five page spread inside and it was funny because Daniel and I don't have any deep dark secrets so they had nothing but nice things to write in there but yeah. you know there are pictures of me and him changing and that was on the front cover of the magazine mm-hmm. and they said something kind of rude on the front cover that is the only time they crossed the line nice. that magazine soon was shut down right after that because it happened to a couple of artists mm-hmm. we've been lucky I've seen what the Hong Kong press can do to some people We've been very lucky, and I thank them for that.